3. Check if two arrays are equal or not. Let's understand the problem statement. You will be given two arrays of equal size. Consider both the arrays are equal when elements present in first array are equal to elements present in second array. One simplest solution will be sort the first array, sort the second array, compare the indexes. If all the values are equal, we can consider them as equal otherwise not equal. The time complexity will be n log n as we are sorting the arrays. So is it possible to improve the time complexity? Yes, we can. So what can we do is, we'll maintain a hashing for the first array and we will compare from the second array. So uh, the hash map, so maintains the key as the element of first array, a value is going to be the repeated count. So let's traverse the first array from zero to n minus one. So let's compare each and every element. If the element is present in hash map, so increment the counter, otherwise, insert a element with counter one. Let's see, so one. So one is not present in hash map, so that insert with counter one. Two, two is not present in hash map, so insert two with counter one. And five and four also not present in hash map, so just insert with counter one. Now when it comes to two, two is already present in hash map, so we will just increment the counter. That's it. So we maintain a hash map for first array. So let's compare from second array. So let's see, two is present in hash map so that uh, decrement the counter. So now the counter will be one. Again, four is present in hash map. So decrement the counter again. And five is present in hash map. So decrement the counter. Again, two is present in hash map with counter as greater than zero so that uh, you can decrement the counter. Then one is present in hash map so that you can decrement the counter. Now you see we already reached the end of the array. So it means all the elements of array one is equal to array two. So we can return true. The time complexity here will be linear because we are just traversing from arrays individually. Also, we also maintain the data in hash map, but whatever operation you do on hash map, whether it is search or get or update, on an average it is constant, so that the time complexity will be linear and the space complexity will be also be linear because uh, when elements are uh, unique, the size of the hash map is equivalent to the array size, so that the space complexity will also be linear. That's it. So let's understand the negative use case. So we have two repeated twice and three repeated ones. Let's compare. Two is present and the counter greater than zero. So update the count. Again, two is present. So counter greater than zero, then update the count. Now two is present, but the counter is equal to zero so that we can blindly return false. That's it. So let's implement this. So what we do is we are going to maintain a map uh, where uh, val value is going to be long and the counter is going to be integer because they are giving long array. So this is your counter map which is equal to new hash map. Yeah. So what we do is so we just traverse the array one. So index equal to zero index less than n and index plus plus so we'll just see uh, current counter so we'll just take uh, counter map dot get or default if the value is present it will return otherwise uh, it will give the default value so within an array one for the current index what is the value is there it will return otherwise it will return zero okay so we get the counter so what we do so we'll just uh, update that value with the counter map so counter map dot put off uh, for this index whatever element is present so we'll just uh, update the value as counter plus one that's it so we maintain the all the values into the hash map then we compare with secondary so very simple so i'll just go with the index now i'll just make it as b 
so i'll just uh, yeah so i'll just use get or default from b index i'll get the counter so what i'll do uh, if counter is zero it means the element is not uh, present either the element is not present or the element having the value of zero so we can blindly return false otherwise so what we can do so we will update the counter so counter dot put off for this uh, element we'll just decrement the value that's it so if everything goes well so this doesn't return false so that we can blindly return true that's it so let's compile it let's run it oh it has very huge test cases that's it thanks for watching please do subscribe and share don't forget to click on bell icon thank you very much